so friends in the last lecture i discussed about basic principles of cello foundation what are different type of uh, cello foundations and uh, how the failure of the soil mass takes place whether it is the general shear failure case or maybe the local shear failure case or punching shear failure case uh, i have also discussed about the terjagi's bearing capacity theory now which is based on a uh, strip footing which is resting on the soil mass of infinite extent and that is taken as the case of a plane strain problem now if you see this figure now in this figure you can see that there is a column and a, a foundation this foundation transmits load on the soil underneath it this foundation is placed at a depth df below the ground surface and the width of the foundation is b now when the loads are transmitted through this foundation onto the soil and as the base of this foundation is rough there is an active wedge which is formed below the foundation and uh, the angle which it makes with the horizontal is phi in the terjagi's theory and they, when this uh, foundation is the becomes the part of this particular uh, foundation and this when this wedge pushes the soil mass you will find that the shearing stresses are developed in the soil and the movement of this is registered by the soil mass underneath it now you can see here there are two zones uh, numbered as 2 and 3 this is the zone of radial shear and this is the third zone uh, which is giving the passive resistance now the free body diagram of this particular wedge is uh, shown in the next figure like a b j in which b is the width and the load which is applied that is actually the net ultimate wearing capacity of the foundation the forces to which it is subjected on the uh, a j and b j sides these are the resistance which are offered due to the cohesion and they, these sides act as the rough retaining walls and the forces which are acting as it is pushing so the forces are the passive resistance offered by these you can also very well see that these the searing surfaces do not uh, it, uh, go beyond the horizontal surface at the base of the level and it means it is the, the searing resistance is not considered of the soil which is in this depth at df uh, and its effect is only taken into account by considering a surcharge which is equivalent to gamma df so this is the terjagi's bearing analysis and on the basis of this by considering the static equilibrium of the wedge uh, we have found that the bearing capacity equation in the general soil failure case will be given by q ultimate equal to c and c plus q0 and q plus 0.5 gamma b and gamma where c is the uh, cohesion and q0 q0 is the overburden on at the foundation level that is determined as gamma into df where gamma is the unit weight of the soil gamma uh, b is the width of the foundation and factors nc nq and n gamma are known as bearing capacity factors the, and the expressions for these we have seen in the last lecture now in the case of local shear uh, case the when the failure is in local shear then there are some uh, modifications made like c is replaced by two third of c and in order to determine bearing capacity factors n c n q n gamma which, which are based on the angle of shearing resistance of the soil then that angle of shearing resistance is determined by phi dash when this phi dash may be determined as 10 phi dash equal to two third of 10 phi it means that phi dash is the uh, uh, shearing resistance uh, for the local shear failure case and all these bearing capacity factors can be uh, read from the table correlations are also available but for ready use we can use these tables 
Now, you will find that there is no bearing capacity equation available to account for the transition from the general case and from the local shear failure case. We know that the general shear failure case will take place when the phi value is greater than 38 degrees, whereas for the local shear failure case that phi is less than 28 degrees. But between 28 and 38 degrees, there is no uh, bearing capacity equation. So, in order to take into account this transition, uh, Packetel in 1974 have given the curves for NQ and gamma, N gamma which automatically account for the mixed state of local and general shear failure and they have given a chart like this in which these factors N gamma and NQ are dependent on angle of uh, internal friction. These are the bearing capacity factors. You will find here that if the soil is loose to very loose, there may be possibility of the uh, local shear failure case. So, this particular chart accounts for all the cases general shear failure, local shear failure and then the uh, transition. So, this is what we have discussed in the last lecture. Now, I am going to extend it for the general bearing capacity of cello foundation. Now, several investigators redefined the solution suggested by Tarjagi, including Meerhoff in 1951, Martinson in 1953 and Bala in 1962. Now, all these solutions suggest that the bearing capacity factors N c and N q do not change much. However, N gamma vary widely mainly due to the assumption of the wedge shape located directly below the footing. It means that is the elastic wedge which is formed below the foundation. Now, model tests have been have shown that the sides of the wedge A B J which makes angle of 45 plus phi by 2 instead of phi as suggested by Tarjagi. Now, this type of failure mechanism is shown in the next figure. Now, here you can see again as far as the uh, failure zones are concerned or the wedges are concerned they are similar to what we have seen in the case of Tarjagi 1, 2, 3. Only difference is that the inclination which, uh, which this part, these particular sides of the elastic wedge we are making that was phi in the case of Tarjagi and now it is 45 plus phi by 2 in the case of other uh, theories proposed. Now, these are this, this particular observation has been obtained on the basis of model studies carried out by those researchers. The equation is in the same general form as that given by Tarjagi. However, the bearing capacity factors are not the same because the because of this uh, inclination of the wedge. However, Tarjagi bearing capacity equation yield good results for all practical purposes. That is why you will find that the Tarjagi bearing capacity factors is preferred. The Tarjagi bearing capacity equation has been modified for other shapes of foundations by introducing the shape factor. As you know that this Tarjagi bearing capacity, fact, uh, capacity equation has been developed for a strip footing of size B which is resting at a depth gamma uh, d f. Now, this these particular uh, correlations or the equation can be extended in the case of square foundations, in the case of circular foundations in the form like in the case of square foundations this q ultimate is 1.3 c n c plus q n q plus 0.4 gamma b n gamma. You can see from here that that c is replaced by 1.3 c and 0.5 is replaced by 0.4. Similarly, the case for circular foundations in which this is 1.3 c n c plus q n q plus 0.3 gamma b n gamma. Now, in the case of rectangular foundations, the shape factors can be determined by these uh, this particular equation in, and the shape factors are included here. Like this q ultimate bearing capacity is given by c n c plus 1.3 b by l, where b is the width of the foundation or the diameter of the foundation, L is the length of the foundation and other factors remaining as it is. So, 
for the rectangular foundations this ultimate bearing capacity will be given by c n c 1 plus 0.3 b upon l plus q 0 n q plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma 1 minus 0.2 b upon l. Now, the especially for the case of uh, saturated clays, Scampton has given bearing capacity factors in 1951 and he has proposed that the following equation holds good for the bearing capacity of a strip foundation resting on saturated clays. Now, in the case of clays as phi is 0, so other parameters uh, when is and we are left with equation q ultimate equal to c n c plus gamma d n f gamma d f and by definition net ultimate bearing capacity is equal to ultimate bearing capacity minus overburden gamma d f. So, net ultimate bearing capacity will become equal to c into n c. Now, this cohesion is actually the undrained cohesion. This undrained cohesion can be determined by conducting unconsolidated undrained test in laboratory in triaxial or may be conducted may be obtained directly by the unconfined compression test which is conducted on the clay sample obtained from the field and cohesion is is equal to this unconfined compressive strength divided by 2 where if we assume that the factor of safety is equal to 3 for because most of the time we consider this factor of safety from 2.5 to 3 and suppose we consider this factor of safety equal to 3 and n c is equal to 6 because you will find that in most of the tables that factor of safety is around 6 5.14 to 5.7 uh, different researchers have given different values. So, if factor of safety equal to 3 and n c equal to 6 for all practical purposes the net safe bearing capacity for strip footing may be written as q n s equal to q u by 2 into n c upon f. Now, here this q by 2 into 6 by f if we uh, substitute these values here then we will get this net safe bearing capacity almost equal to the unconfined compressive strength of the clay. So, if clay th the foundations resting on clay will have at least the un, uh, unconfined compressive strength as the bearing capacity uh, net safe bearing capacity of the foundation strip foundation. Now, this factor n c has been found to vary with the uh, shape of the uh, foundation as well as the depth at which it is placed. So, here there is a chart uh, which is shown by uh, shown by Vesic that this Scampton varying capacity factors are for uh, clay soils. Now, in the case of you can see from these uh, this plot that the lower and upper limiting values of the N c for strip and square foundations may be written as follows. Like for the different type of foundation and for different uh, ratio of d f by v for the strip footing it can be 0 for 0 it will be 5.14, if it is greater than or equal to 4 it is 7.5, for square footing it is 0, if d f by v is 0 then it is 6.2 and if it is greater than or equal to 4 it can be taken as 9. The equation for rectangular foundation for obtaining the value of n c may be written as this n c r r is representing the shape of the foundation that is equal to 0.84 plus 0.16 b upon l where b is the width of the foundation l is the length of the foundation and n c s is the n c value for the strip footing. Now, this n c value of the strip footing may be obtained by the previous uh, graph or the table. So, here this n c r is n c for the rectangular foundation and n c s is the n c for the I am sorry this is for the square foundation. Now, all these uh, correlations are valid when the soil is dry. Now, we know that there are lot of fluctuations in the water table in various seasons. So, the effect of water table on varying capacity of foundations will have to be uh, taken into account. 
the theoretical equations developed for computing bearing capacity of soil are based on the assumption that the water table lies at a depth of foundation equal to or greater than the width of the footing. Now, suppose the water table lies at any intermediate depth which is less than d f plus b, the bearing capacity gets affected due to the presence of water table. We know that due to the presence of water table or uh, fluctuations in the water table, there is decrease or increase in stresses, the effective stresses are increases, increased or decreased and then and hence the bearing capacity also increases or decreases. Now, here we can consider two cases. In case 1, when the water table lies above the base of the foundation, means it is between 0 from the ground surface 0 to depth of the foundation and in the case 2, when the water table lies within the depth B below the base of the foundation. Now, these two cases can be uh, considered and solved by using two different methods. In the first method, for any position of the water table within the depth d f plus b, this q ultimate will be given by c n c plus q 0 n q r w 1 plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma r w 2. Now, the factors r w 1 and r w 2 are known as the reduction factors for water table. Now, r w 1 is the reduction of factor for water table of a base level of foundation, R w 2 is the reduction factor for water table below base, base level of the foundation. Now, in the case 1, when the water table lies of a base level of foundation or when the depth of the water table divided by depth of foundation is less than or equal to 1, the equation for R w 1 may be written as R w 1 equal to 0.5 in bracket. 1 plus d w 1 upon d f and from this equation we can find out that if this ratio is 0 d w 1 upon d f then r w 1 equal to 0.5, but if this ratio is equal to 1 means depth of the water table which is above the foundation level is at the level of the foundation itself then it becomes equal to 1. Uh, if th this ratio becomes 1 and hence R w 1 becomes equal to 0. Now, this can be made clear by this particular figure. Now, here we are considering the case when the ground water table is above the base of the foundation and d w 1 is the uh, depth of the water table below the ground surface, d f is the depth of the foundation. Now, based on those two equations, we can develop a relationship between R w 1 and d f d w 1 upon d f and similarly for the other case when the water table is uh, below the level of the foundation or when d w 2 by b is less than or equal to 1. Now, similar to the previous equation this equation for R w 2 may be written as 0.5 1 plus d w 2 by b where d w 2 by b is 0 then R w 2 will be equal to 0.5 and for the case when d w 2 by b is equal to 1, R w 2 will be equal to 1. Now, again this can be made clear by this particular figure. You can see that this ground water table is below the base of the foundation, but it is lying between these two depth where this is the b and the depth of the foundation, additional depth of the foundation which is considered as b. Now, from the previous equation, a relationship between R w 2 and d w 2 by b can be developed and that, that relationship is nothing but a straight line. So, this particular graph can also be used to find out the uh, R w 2 for intermediate values of d w 2 by b. The relationships for R w 1 and R w 2 as given previously are based on the assumption that the submerged unit weight of the soil is equal to half of the saturated unit weight and the soil above the water table remains saturated. Alternatively, effective that is submerged unit weight should be used in the Terzaghi's bearing capacity equation for the soil below water table. Now, I will explain method 2. Now, this method is takes into account 
the equivalent effective unit weight and these may be used to determine ultimate bearing capacity. Like what we will do, we will replace unit weight of soil which is above the foundation level and the unit weight of the soil up to depth B below the foundation level by gamma E1 and gamma E2, where gamma E1 is the weighted effective unit weight of soil lying above the base level of foundation and gamma E2 is the weighted effective weight of the soil lying within the depth B below the base level of the foundation. Gamma saturated is the saturated unit weight of the soil below the water table and gamma submerged is the submerged unit weight of the soil. Now, case 1 when the water table lies above the base level of foundation or when dw1 upon df is smaller than or equal to 1, then this gamma E1 can be written as gamma submerged plus dw1 upon df in bracket gamma minus gamma submerged, whereas gamma E2 will remain gamma submerged. Now, in the case 2, when the water table lies below base level of the foundation or when dw2 by b is less than or equal to 1, then gamma E1 will be equal to gamma and gamma E2 will be equal to gamma submerged plus dw2 by b gamma minus gamma submerged. Now, we have discussed so far the Terzaghi bearing capacity uh, equation and now I will explain uh, or we will be more conversant with the use of this Terzaghi bearing capacity equation and by solving two uh, few word examples. Let us say the first example is a strip footing of width 3 meter is founded at a depth of 2 meter below the ground surface in soil strata having unit cohesion as 30 kilo Newton per meter square and angle of shearing resistance phi equal to 35 degrees. The water table is at a depth of 5 meter below the ground level. The moist weight of the soil above the water table is 17.25 kilo Newton per meter cube. Now, we will be using Terzaghi bearing capacity equation to determine the ultimate bearing capacity of soil, the net ultimate bearing capacity of soil and the safe bearing capacity of soil for a factor of safety equal to th 3. Now, in this case general shear failure criterion of Terzaghi has been considered. Now, depending upon the uh, description, this is the sketch which shows the depth of the foundation as 2 meter, width of the foundation and this is water table is 5 meter below the ground surface. Here phi equal to 35 degrees, gamma equal to 17.25 kilo Newton per meter cube and C equal to 30 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, for phi equal to 35 degrees, the bearing capacity factors can be obtained by the plots available or the tables. Now, if you use tables then you can find that phi, phi equal to 35 degrees, NC is equal to 57.8, NQ equal to 41.4 and N gamma equal to 42.4. Now, from Terzaghi equation if you substitute this in the equation Q ultimate equal to CNC plus gamma DF n q plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma. If you substitute respective values here and solve it, you will get ultimate bearing capacity as the 4259 kilo Newton per meter square. We know that net ultimate bearing capacity is equal to ultimate bearing capacity minus gamma d f. So, this will become equal to 4225 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, we can find out net safe bearing capacity if we know net ultimate bearing capacity by dividing it by a factor of safety. Now, here this factor of safety equal to 3. So, 4225 divided by 3 that will become equal to 1408 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, in order to determine the safe bearing capacity, we will have to add gamma d f to the net safe bearing capacity and it comes out to be 1443. It means if all the uh, quantities are known, we can find out the bearing capacity, ultimate bearing capacity, net safe bearing capacity and ultimate safe bearing capacity of the uh, foundation. Now, in the example 2, it has been extended with all other data remaining the same, only thing is 
that was for the general shear failure case. Now, we are using it for the local shear failure case. Now, for local shear failure case, we have seen that tan phi dash becomes equal to two third of tan phi and c dash becomes equal to two third of c and using those values here, we obtain this phi dash is 25 degrees and c dash as 20 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, from the table for phi dash equal to 25 degrees, we can find out bearing capacity factors for the local shear failure case given as n c dash, n q dash and n gamma dash. So, this is 25.1, 12.7 and 9.7. Now, again in the Tarjagi bearing capacity equation, if you substitute these values, we will get this ultimate bearing capacity as 1191 kilo Newton per meter square. Following the same approach, we can find out net ultimate bearing capacity as ultimate minus gamma d f, then net safe by net ultimate by factor of safety and then finally, safe as net safe plus gamma d f. In this manner, we can find out bearing capacity for the local shear failure case also. Now, there is another example in which the effect of water table has been taken into account. The data is similar to what is given in example 1, only thing is the there is change in the location of water table such that the, the water table rises to the base level of the foundation, determine the safe bearing capacity of the footing, all other data remaining the same, only thing only change is in the saturated unit weight of the soil that is considered as 18.5 kilo Newton per meter cube. Now, when the water table is at the ground level, we have to use the submerged unit weight of the soil. Therefore, gamma submerged will be equal to gamma saturated minus gamma w. 18.5 minus gamma w is the unit weight of water. So, this is 18.5 minus 9.81, it comes out to be 8.69 kilo Newton per meter cube. Now, again substituting all these values, we will find that the Q ultimate comes out to be 3001 kilo Newton per meter square. Again, we find out Q net safe as Q ultimate by factor of safety and Q safe by Q net safe plus gamma d f. So, in this manner, we can take into account the effect of water table. Now, in another example, suppose the water table occupies some other positions like for case A, water table is 1.25 meter below ground level, it is 1.25 meter below base level of the foundation, what will be the safe bearing capacity. Now, assuming again gamma saturated as 18.5 kilo Newton per meter cube, gamma above the water table as 17.5 kilo Newton per meter cube, other data remaining the same. Now, this is the sketch for the description here. Now, here there are two cases, when the water table is above the foundation DW1 is 1.25 meter, another case water table is below the foundation DW2 is uh, 1.25 meter below the base level of the foundation. So, this is case 1, this is case 2. Now, in order to obtain this solution, we can use either uh, method 1 or method 2. In the method 1, we have seen that the uh, water table correction factors R w 1 and R w 2 are determined, whereas in the method 2, we go for the equivalent effective unit weight. Now, in the case of method 1, by making use of the reduction factors R w 1 and R w 2 and using Tarjagi equation, this Tarjagi varying capacity equation is written as Q ultimate equal to C n C plus gamma d n Q minus 1. R w 1 plus 0.5 v gamma n gamma R w 2. In order to determine R w 1 and R w 2, either we can use equation directly or we can go for the charts which I have shown earlier. Now, if you substitute respective values of d w 1, d f, d w 2 and b, we can obtain R w 1 and R w 2. In this particular case, these are found out as 0.818 R w 1 and R w 2 equal to 0.5.
Now, by substituting known values in the equation, the net ultimate bearing capacity can be determined as 3547 kilo Newton per meter square. And by the usual method, we can find out Q net safe if Q net ultimate is known, factor of safety is known. So, we simply divide it by factor of safety and we obtain net safe bearing capacity and that is equal to 1182 kilo Newton per meter square and the Q safe is equal to Q net safe plus gamma D F into R W 1 and that comes out to be equal to 1212.3 kilo Newton per meter square. So, in this manner we can find out the effect of the water table. Now, when case 2 when the water table is at 1.25 meter below the base of the foundation, then again using the formula as described earlier, we can find out R w 1 by this particular equation and it comes out to be 1 R w 2 by this particular equation which comes out to be 0.42. Only thing we will have to substitute 1.25 for d w 2. Now, again using the equation for net ultimate bearing capacity, we can opt uh, substituting different parameters and solving it, we will get this net ultimate bearing capacity as 4029 kilo Newton per meter square. By the usual procedure, we can find out net safe bearing capacity and then finally, the safe bearing capacity of the foundation. Now, alternately we can use, we can go for method 2 which we have discussed by equivalent effective unit weight, submerged unit weight comes out to be gamma saturated minus gamma w that is equal to 8.6 kilo Newton per meter cube and net ultimate bearing capacity is given by C n C plus gamma E 1 D f n q minus 1 plus 0.5 gamma E 2 B n gamma. Now, case 1 when the water table is at 1.25 meter below the ground level, then gamma E 1 can be determined by this particular equation that is equal to uh, buoyant unit weight plus d w 1 upon d f plus gamma minus gamma b. Here, gamma b is the gamma submerged, gamma equal to gamma saturated, this gamma equal to gamma saturated that comes out to be uh, that is given as 18.5 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, gamma E 1 is determined as 8.69 plus 1.25 by 2, 18.5 minus 8.69 using the formula. So, we get this gamma E 1 as 14.82 kilo Newton per meter cube. Gamma E 2 is nothing but gamma submerged in this case, it comes out to be 8.69 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, when we substitute all these values along with the bearing capacity factors, we find out Q net ultimate that comes out to be 3480 kN per meter square and Q net safe as Q net ultimate divided by factor of safety as 1160 kN per meter square and hence Q safe as 1189.7 kN per meter square. Now, case 2 when the water table is at 1.25 meter below the base of the foundation, this gamma E 1 is taken as gamma 18.5 kN per meter square cube and this gamma E 2 is taken as gamma submerged plus d w 2 by b gamma minus gamma submerged. If you substitute different values of gamma submerged, gamma, gamma saturated etcetera, you will find that it comes out to be equal to 12.78 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, in place of uh, the gamma, we use now gamma E 1 and gamma E 2 appropriately and we get this net ultimate as 4044 kN per meter square. Then Q net safe again by this formula, we will get 1348 kN per meter square and Q safe as 1385 kN per meter square. Now, in another example, if we take into account the shape of the footing, now, here we have considered the case for the earlier we considered the case for the strip footing. Now, here it is a square footing which fails by general shear failure in cohesionless soil means C equal to 0 under an ultimate load of 7500 kN. The footing is placed at a depth of 2 meter below the ground level given phi equal to 35 degrees 
gamma equal to 17.25 kilo newton per meter square we will have to determine the size of the footing if the water table is at great depth so this can be solved by using terzaghi's equation for a square footing here we have c equal to 0 so c and c term will vanish and we will be left with q ultimate equal to gamma df n q plus 0.4 gamma b n gamma because this footing is a square footing for phi equal to 35 degrees n q equal to 41.4 and n gamma equal to 42.4 these can be obtained either from the table or by the charts so when you substitute these values of n q n gamma gamma d f b in this ultimate bearing capacity equation we will be left with the bearing capacity as 1428.3 plus 292.56 b where b is the unknown now we also know that the q ultimate will be equal to the the load divided by the area of the foundation so it becomes q u upon b square that is equal to 7500 kilo newton divided by b square now if you simplify this equation and transpose we will get this cubic form of the equation as b q plus 4.882 b square minus 25.63 equal to 0. Now, when we solve this equation by trial and error, we will get that the width of the foundation is 1.95 meter. It means a square foundation of 1.95 by 1.95 meter will be used. Now, in another example, that is the case of a rectangular footing. A rectangular footing of size 3 meter by 6 meter is founded at a depth of 2 meter below ground surface in a homogeneous cohesionless soil. It means again c equal to 0 having an angle of shearing resistance phi equal to 35 degrees. The water table is at great depth. The unit weight of soil is 18 kilo Newton per meter cube. We have to determine net ultimate bearing capacity, net safe bearing pressure for factor of safety equal to 3. 3 the safe load q s for the, the footing can carry now again use Tarjagi theory. Now, using Tarjagi equation for c equal to 0 we will get this as the equation for rectangular footing gamma d f equal into n q minus 1 plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma 1 minus 0.2 b upon l. Now, by substituting different values we will get net ultimate as 2485 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, from this net ultimate we can find out net safe if we know factor of safety. So, 2485 divided by factor of safety that is 3 equal to 828 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, once this q net safe is known we can find out q safe that is the ultimate safe bearing capacity equal to qns plus gamma df it comes out to be 864 kilo Newton per meter square and hence the allowable load will be equal to the area of the footing into q net safe and that comes out to be equal to 15552 kilo Newton. Here we consider another example of a rectangular footing of size 3 meter by 6 meter which is founded at a depth of 2 meter below ground level in cohesive soil in b means phi equal to 0 which fails by general shear failure given that gamma is 18 kilo Newton per meter cube c equal to 45 kilo Newton per meter square the water table is close to the ground surface we will have to determine ultimate bearing capacity net ultimate bearing capacity and net safe bearing capacity by Terzaghi's method and by Scampton method here we use factor of safety equal to 3. Now, first of all by Terzaghi's method as phi equal to 0 other parameters containing at phi term uh, will vanish and we will be left with only n c and n c will come out to be equal to 5.7 and n q becomes equal to 2, 1 for this case. So, this ultimate bearing capacity will be written as c n c plus 1 plus 0.3 b upon l because it is a rectangular footing 
plus gamma d f. Now, substituting the known values of other parameters like c, n c and n q and gamma and d f, we will get this ultimate bearing capacity as 331 kilo Newton per meter square. Net ultimate bearing capacity that will be equal to q ultimate minus gamma d f comes out to be 295 kilo Newton per meter square. Net safe if we know net ultimate divided by factor of safety we will get it as 98.33 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, if we use Scampton method, now using Scampton method we have q ultimate equal to n c r plus gamma d f, where this n c r is the bearing capacity factor for rectangular foundation and as discussed earlier, this n c r is equal to 0.84 plus 0.16 v by l into n c s, where this c s is for the square foundation. Now, either we can use this uh, graph also by which we can find out what is the value of for the circular or square foundation, the value of n c depending upon the ratio d f by b. So, using this particular plot, we can obtain from this figure for d f by b equal to 0.67, n c s comes out to be 7.4 it can be seen again from this figure, we can find out it, it comes out to be 0.64. And from this, when we substitute for the bearing capacity factor n c for the rectangular foundation, when we substitute it here and the value of d f by b, we will get this as 6.8. And once n c for rectangular foundation is known, we substitute in the ultimate bearing capacity equation, we find out ultimate bearing capacity as 342 kilo Newton per meter square and net ultimate bearing capacity as 306 kilo Newton per meter square. If we know factor of safety, again q n u upon factor of safety will give you q net safe that comes out to be 102 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, one thing can be noted here that Terzaghi's and Scampton's values are in close agreement for cohesive soils. Now, in the uh, example 6, which we have considered uh, previously, if the soil in example 6 is cohesionless, c equal to 0, and if it fails by local shear, then how to get this value of net ultimate bearing capacity and net, net safe bearing capacity with other data remaining the same this is explained in this particular example. Now, from Terzaghi's equation, we have for local shear failure and c equal to 0, this net ultimate bearing capacity given by gamma d f n q dash minus 1, where n q dash n gamma dash are the bearing capacity factors for the local shear failure case. These can be obtained if we obtain value of phi dash and that phi dash will be given by 10 inverse two third of 10 35 degrees, where 35 degrees is the phi value when it is the case of general shear failure. So, when we substitute it here, we will get phi dash equal to 25 degrees and for this phi dash equal to 25 degrees, using the tables, we can find out what is n q, what is n gamma and those will be the local shear failure bearing capacity parameters. Now, when we substitute these known values, we will get net ultimate and finally, net safe as net ultimate divided by factor of safety. Now, in this particular case, it comes out to be 219 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, this is another example. Uh, what will the grass and net safe bearing capacity of sand having phi equal to 35 degrees and unit weight of soil 18 kilo Newton per meter cube? under the following cases, when the size of the footing is 1 meter by 1 meter square or the size of the footing is circular diameter of 1 meter dia and thirdly is 1 meter wide strip footing. It means in this through this example, we can compare the bearing capacity for different type of footings, whether it is square footing or a circular footing or a uh, strip footing. Uh, for phi equal to 35 degrees, 
n q and n gamma factors are determined uh, can be read out from the table for square footing this ultimate bearing capacity is equal to gamma d f n q plus 0.4 gamma b n gamma here this factor is 0.4 whereas in the case of strip footing it is 0.5 so when we substitute respective values of gamma t f gamma again and b and n gamma we find we get ultimate bearing capacity and that comes out to be in this particular case equal to 1050.5 kilo newton per meter square once ultimate bearing capacity is known we can find out net ultimate bearing capacity as q ultimate minus gamma df in this case it is 1032.5 and then net safe bearing capacity as net ultimate bearing capacity divided by factor of safety so this comes out to be 344.17 kilo newton per meter square for the case of circular footing this factor in this equation is 0.3 and other factors remaining same we substitute values we get q ultimate then we get q net ultimate and finally we get q net safe so different values of q ultimate net ultimate and q net safe are 974.16 kilo newton per meter square 956.16 kilo newton per meter square and 318.72 kilo newton per meter square respectively for the case of strip footing when we substitute respective values in the tarjagi bearing capacity equation we get q ultimate as 1126.8 kilo newton per meter square q net ultimate as 1108.81 kilo newton per meter square and q net safe as 369.6 kilo newton per meter square now this is another example that is of a strip foundation which is founded at a depth of 1.5 meter below the ground surface water table is close to the ground surface and the soil is cohesionless the footing is supported to carry a net safe load intensity of 400 kN per meter square with factor of safety equal to 3 given that saturated unit weight of the soil as 20.5 8.5 kN per meter cube and phi equal to 35 degrees find the width of the footing under general shear failure criterion given by tarjag now again in order to solve this problem once we know value of phi nq and n gamma parameters are obtained from the table and we substitute these values in the equation of tarjagi for the uh, strip footing and that is gamma df nq minus 1 plus 0.5 gamma v n gamma now we know that the water table is very close to the ground surface so the gamma will be used as the submerged unit weight where gamma submerged in both the terms and that is equal to gamma saturated minus gamma w so this is the gamma saturated minus unit weight of water will give 11.04 kilo newton per meter cube as the submerged unit weight of the soil mass and when we substitute these values uh, and it is given that the net safe equal to 400 kilo newton per meter square then for this net safe if we multiply it by factor of safety we will get net ultimate and this net ultimate is compared with the net ultimate which we obtain from the bearing capacity equation so when we up, uh, substitute this then the unknown parameter in this case is the width of the footing when we solve it we will get width of the footing as 2.27 meters now this is another example uh, at what depth should a foundation of size 2 meter by 3 meter be founded to provide a factor of safety equal to 3 If the soil is stiff clay having an unconfined compressive strength of 120 kN per meter square the unit weight of soil is 18 kN per meter cube the ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation is 425 kN per meter square again using tarjagi theory and water table considering very close to the ground surface now using tarjagi theory for the case phi equal to 0 for the 
rectangular foundation, we have this Q ultimate equal to 5.7 that this 5.57 is the N C parameter C 1 plus 0.3 B upon L plus gamma D F. Since the water table is close to the ground level, gamma which we use again that will be the gamma submerged in the above equation and gamma submerged is equal to gamma saturated minus gamma W that comes out to be 8.19 kilo, kilo Newton per meter cube. Now, the cohesion is the unconfined compressive strength divided by 2 and unconfined compressive strength in this particular case is given as 120 kilo Newton per meter square. So, cohesion comes out to be 60 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, when we substitute these values, we can obtain the unknown parameter that is the depth of foundation where the foundation should be placed for this particular case and when we solve it, we get depth of foundation as 1.78 meters. Now, in another example that is the case of a rectangular foundation which is to be founded at a depth of 2 meter below the ground surface in C5 soil having the following properties. The properties of the soil are porosity that is equal to 40 percent, specific gravity of soil solids that is given that is equal to 2.67, cohesion C is given as 15 kilo Newton per meter square and angle of shearing resistance is given as 30 degrees. The water table is close to the ground surface. If the width of footing is 3 meter, what is the length required to carry a grass bearing pressure of 455 kilo Newton per meter square with a factor of safety equal to 3 using Tarjagi's theory of general shear failure. Now, again in this case, our aim is to find out what should be the length of the footing. Now, for the rectangular footing, ultimate bearing capacity given by Tarjagi is C n C plus 1 plus 0.3 B upon L plus gamma D F n Q 0.5 gamma B n gamma 1 minus 0 0.2 B by L. Since the water table is close to the ground surface, we will have to first find out what is the unit weight. Now, as it is uh, very close to the ground surface, the unit weight will be the gamma submerged and gamma submerged can be determined if we know gamma w specific gravity of soil solids which is given and the wide ratio. This wide ratio can be determined if we know porosity by the relationship E equal to n upon 1 minus n. So, when we substitute value of porosity which is 40 percent 0.4 divided by 1 minus 0.4 it will give uh, the wide ratio of the stratum comes out to be 0.67. Now, when we substitute this 0.67 in the submerged gamma submerged equation, we will find that gamma submerged will come out to be equal to 9.81 kilo Newton per meter cube. Now, for phi equal to 30 degrees from Tarjagi's table, we can find out what is N C, N Q and N gamma and these values are 37.2, 22.5 and 19.7 respectively. Now, by substituting all these known values, we can find out a relationship for ultimate wearing capacity which will have one unknown and that unknown is length of the foundation. Uh, in the problem, uh, Q S is given as 455 kilo Newton per meter square and factor of safety is given as uh, 3. So, we know that Q net safe equal to Q S minus gamma D F. So, it will come out to be 455 minus 9.81 into 2 that is equal to 435.38 kilo Newton per meter square. Then, then net ultimate will be uh, can be obtained by multiplying Q N S with a factor of safety that comes out to be 1306.14 kilo Newton per meter square. And Q ultimate will be equal to Q net ultimate plus gamma D F. So, that will come out to be 1325.76 kilo Newton per meter square. And we have already obtained a relationship for Q ultimate in which L was unknown. So, when we equate this value with the equation, uh, we get value of uh, length of the foundation. That is 1325.76 equal to 1289 plus 328 by L and we solve it length of the foundation comes out to be 8.92 meter. So, uh, in this particular lecture I have tried to explain 
the use of uh, safe wearing capacity equation given by Tarjagi in order to solve problems related to strip footing, square footing, circular footing, rectangular footing and in the conditions when the water table is at different locations below the ground surface and for the case of cohesionless soil and for the case of cohesive soil including the Scampton's uh, bearing capacity parameters. Now in the next lecture, I will discuss few more uh, worked examples uh, to find out ultimate bearing capacity and or in other, other way around to find out the unknowns like what should be the depth of foundation, what should be the width of foundation or length of foundation. Thank you. Thank you.